I'm tired of everyone talking about the Karambit for self-defense. The fact of the matter is that Karambits aren't actually very good at fighting knives, and this is easy to prove by looking at historical examples of fighting knives. Now, knives can be broadly divided into kitchen knives, tools such as carving or hunting knives, and weapons, knives specifically designed for killing people. And weapons are unique in that the thing you're using them on is usually thrashing around and fighting back. This creates a different use case, and as a result, often necessitates different design elements. Knives can be used for multiple purposes, but I'm specifically going to be arguing as to why karambits are bad as weapons. Also, karambits themselves come in many forms, so I'm mainly going to be talking about the Western modern version of the karambit. Because if someone's trying to sell you on their deadly karambit fighting workshop, this is almost definitely the kind they're using. Let's look at some historical examples of knives specifically designed to be weapons to try and find some commonalities in design. Then we're going to hypothesize as to why those commonalities exist, whether they're actually indicative of a better weapon, and whether the karambit shares any of those design elements. But first, some important caveats. Number one, I won't be looking at many examples of combat knives used in modern warfare because while they may be carried in combat, they're primarily used as tools. Knives become less useful weapons when the enemy has machine guns. Number two, I'll avoid looking too closely at weapons that evolved from tools because they might have too many lingering design elements from what their tool usage was. When peasants use farm equipment in warfare, it doesn't mean they're good weapons. It means the peasants can't afford better weapons. Number three, I'm not going to give too many examples or delve too deep into the history of any of these weapons because that would take a really long time. I just want to give a small handful of examples from a few different cultures in order to illustrate a point. And I apologize for not just having all these weapons laying around my house because we can't all be Scala Gladiatoria. Now, let's see if we can spot any design elements from looking at different weapons. And I apologize in advance for butchering the pronunciations. When we look at Afghan knives, such as the Chora and Pesh Cavs, we see long, narrow blades with a lot of cutting surface, a thick spine, and a sharp point. When we look at medieval Quillon, Rondel, and Bullock daggers, we see a long, narrow blade with a sharp point and an even greater cutting surface area due to it being a double-edged blade. Looking over the Cinquadia dagger, we see another symmetrical weapon with a lot of cutting area. Some of them have rounded points in line with a cutting weapon, and others have needle-like points for thrusting. And we continue to see these design elements with the Jambia, with its double-sided blade and thick spine that goes all the way to the tip of the weapon. Despite its curved appearance, it's actually designed for thrusting, because the curve is designed to point forward to make the angle easier on your wrist. What's interesting to note is that these historic knives are quite large, often being more than a foot and a half in length. This is considerably larger than what we think of as fighting knives today. Even the Japanese Tanto was modified to be longer and longer throughout history until it evolved into the katana. This makes sense because knives were typically backup weapons or were carried in places where a full battlefield weapon wasn't allowed. After all, if I'm going to get into a fight, I would much rather have a sword than a knife. It logically follows that people would buy the largest knives they could comfortably wear and legally carry. And of course, a larger knife also means a greater cutting area. The rules of thumb for historical weapons seem to be bigger is better, be able to thrust, maximize cutting area and have a thick ridge or spine for added strength. Even the bayonet, the last gasp of the bladed primary weapons of war, became very long and very good at thrusting. Not all of these rules have to be followed every time, but they're typically only broken when there's a clear trade-off. For example, the Pesh Cabs and Tonto only have a single edge so that they can have a thick spine for added strength. Knives like the Falcata, Kukri, and Kalpis aren't particularly good at thrusting because they're instead built for chopping. The increased mass towards the point and the blade's outer curve allows them to hit like an axe. There's a wide range of good and practical knife designs, from thrusting weapon to cutting weapon and all the way to chopping weapon. However, karambits seem to implement none of these useful design features. Western karambits are very small, have an extraordinarily small cutting area, are garbage at thrusting, and have very very thin and narrow tips. Their balance point is completely inadequate for chopping, and they're too small and light to chop effectively anyway. But ah, they're not designed for stabbing, cutting, or chopping. They're designed after the claw of a tiger to rip and tear you to death. Yeah, great, except that tigers don't actually use their claws to kill. They use their claws to hold their prey in place and use their teeth to surgically sever its spine. 
They kill things by stabbing them. Their claws are just used as hooks. Virtually every other kind of knife is going to have a better reach, a larger cutting area, and is less likely to get stuck in my target. Ooh, but with a karambit, I can intercept your attack and sever the tendons in your arm to begin systematically disabling your limb. Oh no, with a normal knife, all I can do is stab you in the chest. Hey, which one of these do you think will end the fight quicker? Sorry, baby, okay? And then you have the problem of ergonomics. Despite all the claims of the Krampit's ring giving you a super secure grip, it actually really sucks. First of all, drawing the knife is a pain because I have to get my finger into the stupid little ring. Knives actually built with an emphasis on ergonomics typically have a bulge or pommel that can easily catch your hand. This is something that even Nerf is aware of. The approach angle is very large, allowing you to draw your weapon without great fine motor skills. Even a folding knife will naturally have your hand guided right to it if you get your thumb anywhere in the pocket. But a karambit requests that you insert your finger into the ring, which means the approach angle is a straight line. And drawing the knife without being in the ring is weird and uncomfortable because your finger is on a rounded surface with nowhere to naturally rest. Once you're actually holding the karambit, the ring transfers the force of your blows into a very small point on your finger, which sucks. Here's a video by Kali Center explaining the ergonomics problem in a bit more detail. When your finger's inside of this ring, you'll bust that finger right out. But suffice it to say that there's a reason the other historical examples don't have a ring on the end. It's because it's awful. Having a hook that can catch your finger on the draw is great. Enclosing that hook into a full circle is stupid. Now, I know that I've been taking a dump all over Krampus, but they're perfectly fine for other uses. The curved blade can prevent it from glancing off when carving. And the ring isn't a problem when just using it as a tool, because drawing it quickly is no longer a concern, and sudden forceful hits really only happen in combat. In addition, the curve of the blade allows it to hold on to and tear through things in a single cut that might take a normal knife two or three. This makes it ideal for cutting through small vines and roots, which which is its actual intended purpose. You see, the Krampit can't be blamed for being a bad weapon because it wasn't designed to be a weapon. It was designed as a farming implement and used for raking roots, threshing, and planting rice. Like many weapons throughout history, the Karambit was a repurposed farming tool. While some versions of the Karambit started to evolve towards a more common weapon shape, the Western version decided to double down on as many disadvantages and weird design elements as it possibly could. If you want to look super cool, I totally understand why you would use a Karambit. But if you want to be good at knife fighting, use basically anything else.